chipped potatoes, boiled, roast, even salted. And quite frankly, I was bored with potatoes. Then I tried just roll pomme noisettes. Vive la différence. Fluffy balls of mashed potato in a crispy coat. I like them a lot. Just roll pomme noisettes. Vive la différence. and now in glosses, fresh from Dulux. Does your family feud over what to watch on TV? It's getting worse. More channels, breakfast TV, teletext, VCRs, video games. That's why I love my new Pi portable color television. So you can watch what you want, where you want, with the brightest picture I've ever seen. Can you get remote control? Yes. Can it get the new stations when they come? Yes. Pi have equipped it for the future now. Pi portable colour television. Equipped for the future, for happiness now. Hampshire village of Cheriton, with the crystal clear waters running through it of the chalk stream which will become the River Itchen, looks peaceful enough today. However, it hasn't always been as tranquil, and perhaps some of the past happenings here have contributed to the many stories of hauntings in the area. For example, in the Civil War, over 2,000 men died in a battle on the edge of the village, and a parish church was erected on the site of a Saxon burial ground. Perhaps it's not too inappropriate if our first visit over the garden wall is to the cottage which was once occupied by the village carpenter and undertaker. At the edge of the village green is the home of Mr and Mrs John Reed. The Victorian brick path leads up to this charming 18th century cottage called Burnt Platt. And in fact there's been a dwelling on this site since Elizabethan times. Hello John. Nice, nice to see you. To see you. Mm. Good. Good. Well, I'm um, admiring your border as we came up. Looks lovely. You must thank you very much. Yes, a lot of people pleased. looking over the gate. We don't do. They? Uh, <laughs> even come through the gate to take <laughs> photographs sometimes. Yes. 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 This very is gratifying. Did you make well, that? We did these ourselves. Yes. yes. And um, well, that's very effective. Well, I should admit it or not, we scraped the moss out of the lawn <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to line it with. As and, good a uh, place as any to to get the moss get, from, yes. uh, I think. Yes. What's that called? That's, that's uh, ladies' mantle. That's right. Yes. I don't know its proper name. Alcamello, Alcamello yes. yes. It's lovely, that. Um, You've got a lot of it, and it, 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 of course it goes on all the well, summer. Well, it's not like it? it here, I think. It yes. uh, started as one small plant and has it's spread... It's very, very... It's a nice well. sort of casual plant, isn't it, that um, spreads out as you say, it's there for a long time, mm. through the summer, mm. and... Um, it's very nice. Uh, John, these are lovely old holly trees. I should imagine well, they've been, been there for some years. I should oh, imagine. Kind of well, yes, lovely. Certainly as long as we have. And, Silver um, variegated holly. Yeah. What I what I was admiring as as I walked up was is this brick path, which I think is so attractive. Well, you, this you, we did ourselves. Did you? Um, with a little help from a friend. But, mm, uh, mm. Basically, we laid the bricks on sand. Mm -hmm. uh, Selborne. It's seconds. a local local so brick. Yes, fairly local. Mm -hmm. um, well, very effective. It's most attractive. Makes him good and make, hard. Make, makes, and, uh, a, makes an extremely, extremely good path, doesn't it? Which, and also, um, you, you managed to find some old Victorian tiles. Tiles. We're very fortunate to get mm. uh, just enough to 
filled in the path on both sides. Absolutely perfect. It edges yeah. it beautifully. Yeah, no, I mean, it couldn't and, um, the garden better, could it? Very no, it matches splendidly, and uh, we fill the bricks, between the bricks, with a sand and cement mixture, a dry sand and cement mm, mixture, mm, which mm. Um, seems to keep the weeds down. Mm. Oh, well, you, you've got very few. Um, there are a few coming through, which mm. <laughs> we'll have to mm. does it, does deal it with in due time. Um, slippery in the winter? Not yet. We had mm. no... Well, the algae, algae or, or problems that sometimes you can get with you get, Sometimes you get very slippery. Mm. Yeah, 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 the other thing I noticed is that you're a fellow beekeeper and you've got three hives yes, in your I've garden. Yes, I've been keeping bees for about uh, seven years now. Yeah. And um, the, the, the interesting thing, I think, is that you've group. got bees in quite a small garden um, uh, with houses all around you. Do, you. do you get any problems from that? Not really, no. Uh, we did have a neighbour who kept remarking that uh, bees were always on her herbs. But right. uh, on the other side, we had chap who said he'd never had so many good beans mm, that's jolly good till yeah. the bees arrived yeah, so um that's hopefully yes, but that's, that's the only time they do swarm of course which, and, uh, and the other interesting thing producing. is that you've got them on top of your garage which is again remarkable uh, that you've got them up well, in the, the air what's the reason for that the children when they were smaller yes, uh, kept them out of the way mm, of the children mm, mainly mm. and um of course it's well above head height on the Coming up the path. I suppose so the bees are I flying mean, out away. Their flight line is high, so they're that's not. Right. They don't uh, interfere with anybody yeah. coming yeah, in and out. Good. And what? does pose problems trying to get up on the roof and. Uh, you, when you're carrying down the high. And the supers you, when they're very heavy. How much have you heavy. had this year so far? About 90, ooh, 95 pounds. Oh, and yeah. that's soft two hives. Oh, and yeah. Mainly the oil seed rape, which we're fortunate in having close by. Fantastic. Within Fantastic. This is the, the orchid rape, is this, this bright yellow. This brilliant yellow splash marvelous, on the countryside. Marvelous crop we're seeing everywhere. Um, yes. End of April, beginning of May. Yes, a lot of people mix it up with mustard. No, the, it's a... It is definitely a... It's produced for the oil, isn't for it? The for the oil from the seeds feed and... Um, margarine or something like that. It's just fortunate it's a very good yes, honey yes. crop as well. But just um, on the honey, it, it um, gives very pale honey, that's right, isn't it's it? It's quite a light honey. Yeah. And then it, it and crystallises rather quickly. Very quickly. You have to take it off within mm. two or three weeks of... The comb being sealed. Right. Otherwise, it crystallises. Otherwise, in the it crystallises, and you can't get it out. Yeah, goodness me, ninety um, pounds. You're going to have a lot of jealous beekeepers. <laughs> I don't expect many so. people have got ninety um, pounds. Got two hives. Two hives. Oh, that's, I think that's, that's uh, remarkable. A record for us. Yeah. Mind um, you, I, I would say for for anybody, um, and I think you'd probably agree that unless you know what you're doing, don't keep beehives with a lot of people around you in a small garden. It, it can. Can problems, problems, though. Uh, yes. They have their off areas, days. Do when... very well, but yeah. <laughs> bees can get angry at times. Yes. Uh, I believe your son's got some honey that he's going to bring to yes, us. Yes, I think you and Richard has. Richard, will you bring it up here, please? Um, this illustrates how it comes off the comb. Quite clear. Yes. Quite clear. And within three or four weeks, it will have set mm. absolutely solid. solid. <laughs> and of course, it does this in the comb if you leave it too long. So if you, so leave you have it... to take it off within a few weeks. Yeah, otherwise you can't get it out. Three or four weeks of um, hmm, arriving. the crop finishing. I see. Yes. And the comb is sealed. That's interesting. It's very um, pale colour, that, isn't it, for, for, for Yes, honey. it's quite attractive. It's, um, you, you could tell that's all seed rape. I don't think it could be anything else. Uh, honey. Pretty well. I think a lot of honeys are pale, but um, that is the timing of the year. And, uh, and when that's finished and you've taken that, do the bees find something else after that? Oh, yes. What do they uh, go for next? They, they'll, they'll, um, I don't know, but they've been working very hard. We've lime got trees? some lovely lime trees no, not far favorite, away, which is it? one, and then we get into the autumn. Just mix flowers, flowers and things. Yes. Blackberry, yeah, garden yeah. flowers, there's always yeah. plenty yeah, of those. Sounds lovely. <laughs> yeah. Looks delicious. Um, John, I'll go around and see your wife Meg now on the other side of the garden. Meg, hello. Working on your roses. Hello, yes, I'm just cutting The weather has bashed them about a bit, yes, I expect. Yes, they're all A few dead wet. ones and you yes. have to um, uh, mm. get out of them a bit. I was just going to ask you, when I came through the gate, I noticed the name Burnt Platt, which is unusual. Is there, is there some story behind this? Oh, yes. Um, the, in 1744, it was thatched and it caught fire because the, there was a hayrick in the field over there which caught fire mm. and the roof of the church had shingles on it. That Gosh. caught fire yeah. and then the roof of the it cottage was caught. It, it was right actually called Church House then. Was it? Yes. Oh dear. Mm. And uh, plat, we think, is thatch. It means yes. burnt thatch yes. and, and that's how the story mm. came. Yes. Really. 
I do, this, this is a bit of garden you recently cleared, and, and I think there are one or two problems you've got here. You were mentioning the wisteria is, yes. a, is a bit of We've a disappointment. Yes, we've had that wisteria about uh, eight or nine years, and it's had five flowers, oh that's dear. all. Oh we were yeah. very fed up with it, actually, because <laughs> we cut the big uh, nut tree down, yes. hoping that that would do the trick, but you see, that was, that was last autumn, and it still hasn't got mm. a flower on it. I think that... Honestly, with wisterias, they differ a lot, rather like people. Mm. And you can get some forms that flower very well indeed, mm. and some that are very poor. I've got a poor one on my house. And in a way, the best advice sometimes is to get another one that you hope is a good flowering form and cut the old one down. Mm. It's a bit drastic, but uh, maybe you'll give it another year and, and see what happens. Well, we've been saying that for a long, for a long time, time now. Yes. Yes, yeah, especially if I've got friends that bought ones in the two years and they're super, you know. Yes. Mm. And the other thing, you were talking about paving a bit more out here. You wanted to make a paved area from the house. Well, yes. We thought about extending that bit there up yes. to here. Yes. And um, having a retaining wall to give us a bit more room there and, and a retaining wall there. I think if my advice would be certainly to pave off the house because if you're, if you're going to have a paved area, it's nice to have access mm. from the house, isn't it? You can yes. immediately walk out and, and um, have your barbecue or whatever there. And I think a retaining wall around this area, personally, I think I'd move those roses, would be very attractive. Yes. I think that would be nice. And tell me, as we go out into the open area, you, what have you cut down a large tree there, have yes, you recently? Yes, yes. That, that was a nut tree, was it? Yes, great big nut tree. Gosh, Enormous. That, that in fact, it, it took over the whole of the garden and made it dark. Yes, yes. And uh, now we've got all this space, and um, we're just wondering what to do with it. But, but uh, quite a big area. Well, it looks so bare now to what it was before. Yes, yes. I wondered whether to put some flowers in front of that path to sort of soften it a bit. Well, of course, the trouble with that path is the levels, isn't it? That The, yes. the concrete is above the grass, so it, it shows as a very harsh line. Mm. I think if it was me, I would, I would take a small border in front, because then you'd screen it. I mean, mm. if it was about two or three foot wide, yes. along there, you could take it right along with a break by the... Was that the privy? Yes, the old yes. Privy. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd put a border there of fairly low plants, perhaps yes. two foot high. Mm. I think they'd, they'd screen it very nicely. I think that would be a good idea. And down that side too? Yes, well, you could, yes. Mm. It's not so bad there. But no, just along there. Yeah. And to the, to the left of the church, we've got this fairly bare wall, yes. uh, brick wall there, mm. which I think you're keen to try and screen a bit. Well, I would like to, you see, because it's, again, just been exposed when we've cleared the garden. Mm. I think mm. something in front of it, perhaps. What, what you... What you um, wanted to do was to was to screen it without actually growing any plants oh, on no, the wall. Oh, no, I don't see. It's not our wall, I, I see. see. Mm. So, I mean, I would suggest if you put up a, a, a trellis about six foot high mm. um, with some cross timber, I mean, if you made it out of mm. wood, it would suit the area. And what would you suggest we put on this uh, timber uh, on construction? On the trellis? Yeah. Uh, I think you could put rambling roses various colours. Yes. You could grow honeysuckle. I think that uh, Halliana is the very sweet-scented one. Yes. Vigorous, because mm. you want quite a lot well, of screen. I think screening. we've got a bit of that down the garden. Yes, it's a lovely, yes. lovely, nice mm. scent in the evening. Yes. Clematis, of course, you can grow in amongst these plants. Mm. They'll grow together. Uh, some of the ivies, the variegated ivies, you could grow. Mm. So I think what you want to do is to try and achieve a, a, a certain amount of evergreen so that it's green in the winter. That would be the ivy, would it? The ivy yes. would give you winter. Mm. And the, the Mr. Nice Haliana. Yes, that's the a same nice one. one. That does, it grows well yes. here. Mm. And I think if you mixed these plants together, you'd get a certain amount of winter cover. Yes. And, yes. and also some flowers in the spring, mm. which should be quite effective and hopefully mm. um, break that bare wall up. Yes. So, anyway, <laughs> rather than hard work for you to put it all in and. Uh, well, you'd have get to get the, someone to make it. You'd get you? somebody to make it, yeah. and, and perhaps you could then do the planting. Yeah. Meg and John Reed are but two of the residents who have helped Cheriton win the Best Kept Village in Hampshire award on no less than three occasions over the last eight years. Most of the residents are involved in the never-ending efforts that have to be made to keep their houses and gardens first-class examples of the way ordinary people can help to preserve a sense of history and belonging to a community. That sense of community was encouraged in earlier years by homes such as this one, which belonged to the Harfields, the village blacksmiths. 
Whether they were making iron fences around their own gardens or dealing with all the tasks set them by their neighbours, there must have always been a cheerful business in front of the house and the adjoining smithy. Jeff, hello. Hello. Here we are at the, the village forge. Yes, that's right. Uh, this has been this this has been in your family since when? Uh, 18, 1824. Has it ready? Mm. Has it ready? And, and this building that we see over here was the forge until how long ago? Yes, well, uh, I would say about 40 years ago, I would say. And, and you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're the first one that's broken I'm the, the first one the that's family not tradition. a blacksmith, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. sad. I don't fancy. suppose there's as much work or you didn't... didn't well, there uh, wasn't at that it. time, of course, but there, there is, is now. now. Yeah. It's just yeah. much in demand. Mm. And these fences, uh, they, they were... They were built also by, or made, shall we say, by a member of your family? Yeah, my grandfather made those, mm -hmm. uh, and this connect, this dividing one here. And, and why did he put it, well, why, it looks almost like two cottages. That's... Well, it, it, a lot of people think it is, but in fact, the that is uh, cobbles underneath those. That, uh, under uh, the grass? Under the it? grass, and they used to lay all their iron, you know, their blacksmith yeah, yeah, iron yeah. there. Yes. And people came in through there to, to go to the blacksmith shop, mm. bringing their dogs, etc. So. He put that so up that, to, that kept just you, to stop, uh, kept stop you from getting uh, a lot of people coming through. Yeah. And, and your family, of course, built the cottage as they well. They built the cottage, yes. It, again, yeah. at about the same time? 1824. 1824. Yes. 1824. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, that's lovely. And, and how, do you find, uh, garden-wise in the front here, you don't get any problems from ducks? I've noticed an awful lot there. They don't well, uh, <laughs> they're not a problem, I, I, except that I had six nests in the garden last Excuse year. Me. Haven't had any this year, but um, and they're not a nuisance except that once they've settled in, you've got to leave it until yeah, they've finished, yeah, yeah. and it, it makes the place a bit yeah, untidy. No, well, they're, they're they're very charming. Well, it's hey, part of the landscape. Part of, part of the landscape yeah. with the river just there. Yeah. Anyway, can we go and have a look at the back? I'd yes, like to see always. the rest of the garden. Yeah. Gosh, very splendid new hedges you've got here. Yes, they are rather nice, aren't they? Nice and solid. Very solid. Mm. And, and how, how old do you think they are? Oh, well over 100 years old. Are they as mm. much as that? Yeah. And, and do you have to cut them very often? Once a year. Mm, not too bad. Normally once a year. I'm hoping that's going to be the case this year because I've had to cut them a, a month early. <laughs> uh, usually end of July, beginning of August. But they mm. were so untidy, I had to get them cut. <laughs> I, I suppose this year we had a lot of hot weather in June. It probably made them grow. I don't know whether that is the reason or not, but I certainly they've so. never, I've never known them grow mm. so early as this. So you might have to cut them twice this year. Well, uh, there's a possibility, <laughs> Hopefully yes. not, yes. Yeah. Well, can we make our way across that splendid apple yes, tree over course. there? Do you know what variety it is? Yes, it's, it's a Bramley. Well, you're certainly going to have a, a, an exceptionally good crop on it this year. Well, from my point of view, far too many. Far too <laughs> many, yes. Now, the trouble is, once uh, in a good apple year, everybody has apples, and you presume you don't know what to do with them. Well, nobody wants them. No, you can't give them away. But uh, they are beautiful cookers, of course, and they and they will keep right round until apples are about again. I think it, uh, really, it, it, it's still one of the very best of the cookers. Mm. And of course, it's a lovely tree to look at. Flowers in the spring. Yeah, and of course, it does create a bit of shade, which mm. is the only place in the garden where you can sit in in the shade. Yeah. The other feature, which which really is amazing, is that fantastic bed of rhubarb. I've never seen mm. anything like it. Well. I never do anything to it at all. Don't it you? just comes along every year. <laughs> yeah. I know that it's been there. My father could never remember it not being there. And he, in fact, was born in 1876, so he was, I suppose he'd been about 106. You've certainly got a splendid golden conifer here. Yes, sixpence in Woolworths. Goodness me. <laughs> well, I bought it. Certainly value for money there. Well, it more than value for money because I bought it as a dwarf con. <laughs> <laughs> and it's now decided to grow to that height. Uh, yeah. You say you had it in a different part of the garden? Well, I did, yes. I had it under the wall for about ten years and then I decided to move it and uh, and this is what's happened it to it. It just to took off. Taken over, rather, yeah, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. This is a plant I love, the... Catmint, yeah. Catmint, yes, yeah. and the pita. It's lovely. It attracts a lot of bees, yeah. which is nice. Covers a lot of ground. Covers the ground yeah. and, and, and flowers really much of the summer, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yes, yes. I think it's a, it sort of uh, typifies summer in a way, that plant, to me. I, I, I like it's it very It's very attractive. That, that's another one you bought recently, is it? I've had that about three or four years, I suppose, mm. now. I hope it's not going to get too big. No, no, that'll stay much more compact. Mm. Rather a, rather a, a mouthful, Picea albertiana conica. Oh, is it? Really? I, don't I, think, don't... I don't know whether it's got a simple name like, uh, you know, I don't it's think it has, really. It's a very nice tree, But it's, it's very nice, isn't it? Yeah. It's very attractive. And here we've got a, a marvellous patch of, of lemon thyme. Mm. 
Do you, do you use it for cooking? No, I don't use it you, for anything. No. But every time I cut the grass, I cut some of it off with yeah. a mower, and you can smell it all over the garden. Oh, it's lovely. It's a very it attractive. Is beauty. Again, the bees like it, don't yes. they? Yes. Yes, I think that's lovely. And, and looking beyond over your garden wall, you've got some lovely farmland oh, there, yes. which is very yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely to have it right, right by you, though. You never seem to be very far from the river or the ducks in Cheriton. So why don't we let them take us downstream a few yards to the last house we visit, the old post office. When Marjorie and Vivian Stopford started work in 1966 to create their home and garden here, it certainly didn't look as idyllic as this. So this is what the main part of the house looked like nearly 20 years ago. As you can see, the bulldozers had moved in in earnest. And Wellington Boots seemed to be the order of the day as a start was made on developing the north end of the property. What one plant that's impressed me very much is the climbing hydrangea, hydrangea petiolaris, on the north wall. That's right, there's a north wall there. Yes, it? yes. North wall plant. Remarkable. Do you find it does any damage to the wall? We no. Know. We, I've been advised you shouldn't let it grow over the roof, which it tries to do. <laughs> right, I noticed. <laughs> we cut it <laughs> So we cut it back. But we will get underneath the tiles if you're not careful. I'm warned obviously. that it might. Yes. And actually on the wall, do you think it actually does any damage to the bricks on the wall? I don't think it does anything. So. No, it has quite no. sort of gentle pads. Yes. That yes. It's so clinging, isn't yes. it? Yes, but I don't think it pulls the mortar out. No, no. It's a very good north wall plant. Yes. Mrs. Stockford, you're going down to the water garden where we're going to meet you later and your husband's going to show me kindly around a bit more of the garden. That's right. So we'll see you yes. in a minute. See you. If we could go on round yes. this way. That's a lovely variegated bush, that uh, variegated cornus, isn't it? Yes. I do know the name. I don't know its actual cornus name. Cornus elegantissima variegata. Ah. It's very pretty. It's a nice sort of light mm. colour, isn't it? Did you get much trouble from the rain? Surprising little. The borders here? Surprising little, considering how... They, 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 was, they, they seem to have uh, I don't think we had held bad, up very well, yes, really. Very well. Yes. I don't think we probably had quite as bad storms as some other places. No, no. It is one of the problems, the heavy rain. I mean, it does mm. a lot of good, makes the plants grow, but Bashes it does everything bash down. them down tremendously. Mm. And this is your nice sheltered little vegetable garden, Indeed, which yeah. supplies you all your needs yes, in vegetables. Yes. In fact, I think I saw a few in another part of the garden, but this is your main, yes, this is the main. main vegetable garden, all nicely shut in. What interests me particularly is your two-coloured beech hedge. Yes, um, I think it's rather fun. It's, it's more interesting than just all copper or all yes, green. I agree, I agree. And you planted it, didn't you? Oh, we planted it, yes, about um, 14 or 15 years ago. And, and how often do you have to cut it? Well, I only cut it, I'm afraid, once a year, towards the end of August. And um, the leaves stay on all the winter. Um, Looks a bit hairy before then. Yeah. Can't do everything. <laughs> it's, I think it's the interesting thing about beech is that if you cut it at the right time, it mm. keeps all its autumn leaves on yeah. and really is a, a good thick screen all the year yeah, round. Indeed isn't it is. It? Indeed it is. But then, of course, you have the problems you were saying of the leaves suddenly the, dropping the, in the spring. That's it. Well, that's. When you really could, yeah. uh, could, could do, do without, without them. them. Indeed. And, and it's not such a slow growing hedge, is it? Well, it's done that in um, for 15 years, yes, yes. and I cut it hard every year at the yeah. top. No, I think it's a very pretty and very effective hedge that, mm. that one would like to see more. And of course, in the foreground here, you've got a hornbeam this hedge, is a hornbeam. which is also attractive. And again, you cut that one usually about now, do you? I cut that about now and then sort of trim off the whiskers yes, in yes. the late autumn. But of course, that's deciduous. It, it doesn't, definitely loses it doesn't keep leaves. any leaves. Very lovely hedge, but doesn't mm. keep its leaves on. Thank you very much. Now, here we are. Hello. Let's see this lovely feature you've got here. A uh, water garden, yes. Tell me, when, when you first came here, what, what did you find this was here like this, or what happened? Well, it was just a bog with nettles and wild watercress. My husband actually fell in. Really? Because <laughs> it was just a bog. I mean, and, they had to dig it out. And you dug the whole thing out? Yeah. And, and, and discovered the spring. And there's a very strong spring running into the River Itchin. Rather, under the road into the Itchin, yes. Amazing. And, and is, it, is it natural, or have you had to do something to it to keep the water in? Not to keep the water in, but we had to put a, 
uh, rick sheet uh, uh, and the bottom stopped the weed mm. growing. So that's a sort of polythene liner. You've polythene had... liner and then gravel and stones on top, on top to keep it from sloping. Keep it from sloping. Uh, Which is very successful. It's very... No weed ever grows. No, it's very clear. And uh, what about, there's a sort of floating weed there. Does that become a well, problem? Well, it does a little bit. It's sort of scum of the sun, and not in, only in hot weather. Mm, it comes to the surface. It comes to the surface. And you have to occasionally... And you cave it a rake. And, and, and it goes off down the And pipe. no fish? Little fish, yes. I, I saw one or two little... Uh, I think they're baby trout. Little trout or sticklebacks or... Because the trout or, breed or, in the or river, or yeah. minnows there. Yes, it really is lovely. And, and of course, you've got this marvellous backdrop of the These golden lovely, weeping willows, lovely which are willows, really yes. lovely trees. Yes, they, they really beautiful. are marvellous. Did you plant these? Or were oh, they no, here? they were here. They were, they They've were grown a great deal since we came. They're very quick growing trees, aren't yes, they? Yes, they are. One, one plant I like very much is the variegated grass there, miscanthus. Yes, it's very it's attractive. It's very clever, that. You've planted a plant that lightens up that rather dark underneath the tree. Yeah, decorative. It's lovely. Very lovely. decorative. Um, and here we've got the stilbies, the pink the stilbies, and white. pink and white. Pink and white right, are stilbies. Yes. And um, that lily you've got an awful lot of in your garden, what variety is That's that? That's a pardalinum lily, which is the one that likes growing on, growing chalk, on chalk, which most of the others don't. And, and it seeds itself? And it seeds it itself all over does the place, it? yes, it does lovely. indeed, yes. I think sometimes commonly called the leopard lily because I it's got so. spots all over it, but it's very lovely. Moving on right in the water there, you've got a magnificent clump of, of arum lizards, which are really looking lovely, aren't they? They do awfully well here, provided they have their roots right in the water. Pr practically in the water, aren't they? Yes, yeah. no frost. Uh, it's it's amazing. I think it's amazing that they survive the cold weather. They, they don't mind a bit. They've been there for some good many years, mm. and they love it. Yes, they've been, well, you can see by that see clump, they do. they're doing marvellously. Yes. Looking around the other side, there's the royal fern there, which is a very attractive fern. You don't see quite so often. And then these awesome. really rather splendid leaves here. Roger um, side. Roger side, which um, very nice leaves. Which we should have those big pink, pink spiraea flowers, but and, and uh, the frost is apt to get the flowers in the, the early flower spring. The flower comes up first. Flower bud comes up before the leaves. Yes. So they're apt to get frost. They're, they're a bit exposed and, yeah. and bang. And, and we leave the beautiful the Hampshire land. village of Cheriton with a reminder that all the things that live here are no doubt influenced by the crystal clear waters of a typical English chalk stream. And long may it continue.